Okay guys, welcome to Engineers Academy. Now we are going to solve this problem which says that determine the surface area of the concrete sea wall excluding its bottom. So this is the application of the theorems of, theorems of Pappus and Goldenius and this is the first theorem. So we will use that, that theorem to find the surface area of this concrete wall excluding its bottom. So for that we will consider the cross section. We will consider this cross section of this wall which is revolved about an axis and the axis is, is located uh, at a distance of 60 feet from the wall the radial distance is 60 feet so let's say this is that z axis is, that is the axis of revolution and this is the side view from here so as we can see that uh, this this corner or this point of the cross section is at a distance of 60 feet this is given this is the radial distance from the z axis is. this distance is 60 feet which is given Right, let me write that this is 60 feet and then uh, since we we want to exclude the bottom surface so we will consider this edge this edge and this edge so in these three edges uh, are revolved so they will make a surface so this slant edge will make this surface and this edge will make this whole surface and similarly this vertical line will make the back surface right so we need to find the sum of these three surfaces which is generated by this slant edge this line and this vertical line so we can use that formula uh, that is the first theorem of the Pappus and Goldenius which tells us that the surface area will be theta and the summation of r tilde times l and r tilde is the location of the centroid of each line segment from the axis of revolution so we have to uh, identify we have to find the location of the centroid of each line segment so this line the centroid of this line segment will be at its midpoint somewhere here the centroid of this line segment will be at its midpoint somewhere here and the centroid of this line segment will be at its midpoint so it will be somewhere here so first let me construct a table so we will write the line segment number let's say this is line segment one this one this is line segment two and this one the slant one is line segment three so we will write its number one two and three then we will find the length of each line segment so the length of this line segment is eight feet from here it is given so i will write eight the line segment of this is 30 feet so this is 30 and the line segment of this is not given but we can find it uh, so if we I look into this so this length this length is 8 feet or we can say that this is 8 feet and from this point to this point the total length is this total length is 15 so 15 minus 8 is 7 so this length is 7 let me write that the base of this triangular cross area is this is 7 right this is 7 feet so if this is 7 we can find the height is known which is 30 this is given so the length of the third segment will, will be 7 square by applying the Pythagorean theorem so this will be 7 square plus 30 square under the square root so let us find that that is 7 uh, square root 7 square plus 30 square this gives us 30.806 so this is 30.806 six feet and remember that the length units are in feet then we will find this uh, the perpendicular distance of the centroid of uh, each line segment from that z axis is, so that is r tilde so the as we can see that uh, the centroid of this line segment will be at this much distance so this is this this will be the r tilde so from here to here this is from here to here this is 60 right uh, from here to here this point if so from from here to here this is 60 feet and then uh, this small length this is 7 so this is 60 plus 7 67 and then this is at the midpoint so this length is 4 so 60 plus 7 is 67 plus 4 is 71 so this is 71 feet so the r bar for line segment 1 is 71 feet this is also in feet so this is 71 feet similarly uh, 
we want to find we want to find the r bar for this line segment uh, so that will be at a distance of this much distance so we have to find this so we have to find this distance from this point to this point from from the axis to the this uh, red dotted line this distance is 60 feet and the, we have to find this small length so we can use the properties of a similar triangles we have this large triangle and then we have this small triangle and let's say that uh, this small length is let's say x if we have this triangle and if we have this small triangle so let's say this length is x this length is 7 and this total length is this is 30 and if this is the midpoint of this line segment then this length this this length is 15 that is 30 divided by 2 this is 15 so if we apply the properties of similar triangles and if we take the ratios of the corresponding sides so that will be equal so x divided by 15 this will be equal to 7 divided by 30 and x will be equal to 7 divided by 30 into 15 so 30 divided by 15 is 2 and 7 divided by 2 is 3.5 so this means that this small length is 3.5 so the r bar will be 60 plus 3.5 so that is 63.5 feet so this is 63.5 feet and similarly in the centroid of uh, this this is this the centroid location of segment 3 this is 63.5 and this is our line segment 2 and its centroid is at a distance of 60 plus 15 this is 15 so 60 plus 15 is 75 feet then we have to take the product of this r tilde times l so this will be 8 into 71 plus and this will be 30 into 75 and then 30.806 into 63.5 and then in the formula we need to take the sum of all these products right and the units will be feet square so now the summation of r tilde times l of each line segment so we have to add up that is 8 into 71 plus 30 into 75 plus 30.806 into 63.5 and this gives us 4774.181 4774.181 and now we need to put all those values in this equation but the angle of revolution is 50 degrees so we need to convert this 50 degree into radians so as we know that uh, theta is 50 degrees and as we know that 360 degrees is 2 pi radians so when we multiply this 50 multiply by 2 pi divided by 360 so we will get the angle in radians that is uh, 0.873 this 0.873 radians so now we need to put that theta in this equation so the surface area generated by these three line segments are these three edges of the cross section will be equal to 0 0.873 multiply by this value which is 4774.181 this is this answer let me write that this answer multiply by 4774.181 so this gives us the surface area equal to 4166.26 4166.26 and the units will be feet square so now this is the surface area which is generated by revolving these three edges of the line segment but since we want to find the total surface area so we need to consider this side and the other side we, uh, of same cross section or same area so we have to find this area so let's say this area is, is a1 and the area of the side is a2 right so we can write that that is a2 so this area consists of a triangle and a rectangle so the area of a triangle is 1 divided by 2 and the base is 7 and the height is 30 which is given that is 30 
and similarly the area of a rectangle is this is 8 so 8 into 30 this is 8 into 30 and now since we have two sides so we will multiply this with 2 and if we calculate this 7 in this is uh, 2 into let me write this is 1 divided by 2 is 0 0.5 into 7 multiplied by 30 plus 8 into 30 so this gives us 690 feet square so this is 690 feet square so the total surface area of this concrete sea wall is a1 plus a2 a1 is 4166.26 plus 690 so for we will add up this answer with 4166.26 so this is 4856.26 4856.26 feet square so this is the solution of this particular problem i hope this will help you in your learning do subscribe my channel if it helps in your learning like this video for the solution of such more problems from Hippler Statics.